Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Douglasville City Council Leg Legislative Work Session of Thursday, April 29th, 2021. Do not adjust your screens at home. Um, I am Mayor Pro Tem Terry Miller. Mayor Michelle Robinson could not be with us tonight, and so we will proceed uh, into this meeting. First, we will have an invocation tonight from Sarah Dickinson, who is the Director of the Adult Spiritual Formation of the First Presbyterian Church of Douglasville, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman Sam Davis. Please, everyone stand. Please pray with me. Father God, we thank you so much for your presence with us tonight. We thank you for this group that is gathered here in this room and virtually online to work towards the flourishing of this great city that we live in. Lord, we thank you for the city of Douglasville. We thank you for the residents that live here. And we pray that um, this city would continue to be one where we can enjoy safety, where we can enjoy um, community and um, all the blessings of living in this town. And Lord, we pray for each of the leaders that are gathered here this evening, for all those who are coming to contribute to this meeting and conversation and discussion. Father, we pray that you would um, enable them to be filled with your wisdom, that the wisdom um, that comes from above is pure, that it is gentle, that it is sincere, that it is impartial, open to reason, full of good fruits and mercy. Um, Lord, would you guide the conversations that happen in this room this evening? Would you be present? Would you be guiding and leading um, each one that speaks, would you help there to be an atmosphere of um, humility and leadership as people come together with different ideas and share them? Um, God, would this room be full of grace and truth? I pray that you'd continue to be with this group. I thank you for all the ways that the leaders of our city are working so hard in the midst of the challenges of a pandemic, continuing in the challenges of um, working with small businesses and businesses here in Douglasville so that there can be continued flourishing for them. I pray that you would guide them and lead them tonight. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman Davis, and thank you, Sarah Dickinson from First Presbyterian Church. Much appreciated. Before we begin um, tonight, I'd like to, to go over a few of the ground rules and protocols for the, our meeting at this, at this hour, and just follow along with me. This gets a little wordy. Uh, today's meeting is being conducted in whole or part by teleconference. Some or all of our elected officials and individuals with agenda items and those wishing to comment during a public hearing or comments from citizens and de delegates will be allowed to do so via audio on Zoom software and if present in person. This open meeting of the Douglasville Mayor Pro Tem and City Council is being conducted by teleconference consistent with the official code of Georgia annotated section 50-14-1G due to emergency conditions involving public safety in order to mitigate the transmission of the coronavirus and reduce risk of COVID-19 illness. That code section, which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting, allows local governments to meet in whole or partially by teleconference in the event of emergency, so long as means are afforded for the public to have simultaneous access to the teleconference meeting. For this meeting, we are conven convening partially by Zoom software, as shown on the city's website, describing how the public may join, which is via YouTube media platform. This is a work session where agenda items are presented for discussion and no official action will be taken tonight. Official action will be taken on the items discussed tonight on May 3rd, 2021, uh, which is Monday at 6 o'clock, for those keeping track at home. If the business you're here for is not listed as an agenda item, there will be ample time under the agenda under, I, under the item comments from citizens and delegates to discuss your business. There are a few protocol items that you need to be aware of before we start the meeting. And uh, please listen closely, because I will not repeat them. Let's see. You'll be asked to keep your comments and presentations on a professional level, dealing with facts that are important for this governing body to make their decision. We will not accept comments that are considered by the chair, that would be me, 
to be pers a personal attack of any nature on any individual or, or group of individuals. You will receive a warning from the chair if you deviate from this requirement. A second deviation will result in a request for you to leave the chambers and premises for the evening. Only one person will be talking at a time. And please do not applaud or react to speakers. Speak from the audience, cheer, carry on a conversation with others in the audience or disrupt the order of this meeting in any way. Uh, you will be reminded, you are reminded that uh, we are only required to accept public comment during required public hearings. We are not required to accept public comment on other items before this council. We do accept public comment on all items because we feel it enables us to, better, to make better decisions. But we will maintain order and as the chair of this meeting at any time during the meeting, I'm prepared to stop public comment on any agenda item if it's believed that the general good of the meeting will not benefit from actions being taken by a member or members of the audience. If you have a cell, a cell phone, or any other electronic device, uh, please either power it down or set it into, the, into silent mode at this time. Thank you. Uh, the agenda items will be handled as follows. The committee chairperson or the vice chair, or in tonight's case may be a ranking member, um, will read the agenda item. Then the person representing the agenda item or the applicant will make his or her presentation first, and that will be the only opportunity for you to present the information. The, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and members of the council will have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant or seek additional information at that point. During public hearing, uh, during public hearing items, the committee chair will ask for comments or statements from the audience. There's a maximum time limit of 20 minutes for those who speak in favor or in opposition to the agenda item. The applicant's presentation is included in this time allotment. Each speaker individually is limited to five minutes. Uh, please make sure you fill out one of the speaker sign-in cards that's uh, on the table outside this room or uh, register online if you're um, presenting or talking via our, our Zoom platform. Prior to approaching the podium, please give your card to the city clerk at the back of the room uh, or make sure that you've completed the form online if you're speaking online. At the podium, please state your name, address, you know, address for the record. Uh, that goes for anybody except for minors. Please, if you're under 18, do not give your address. Uh, let us know if you're speaking in favor or against that particular item when you come forward. Each person has one opportunity to comment on each of the agenda items. No reappearances. If you think something, think of something later that you forgot or didn't say initially, no take backs. Um, this meeting is not a question and answer format. It's not a debate format, even though it may seem that way at times. Uh, a format that gives you an opportunity to make a public comment on the respective agenda item. Please address your comments to the chair, not to the members of the audience, or to the applicant, or to city staff. If your infor information is repetitive of the information previously present presented in this meeting, or any other meetings on this matter, there is no need to present the same information again. Um, you'll be reminded uh, to move on, and then request that you move on to new information that you're prepared to present at that time. Uh, our policy requires that any printed information used for review by the council be submitted in advance to the city clerk's office to be concluded in each council member's work packet. Therefore, do not, please do not pass out or distribute additional information to the council at this time, including during the citizen's comment period. Now, if there are any questions that anybody may have at this time, or forever hold your peace. So we will now move into the agenda tonight. And the first item is uh, announcements and presentations. We do have a presentation, um, actually really it's a proclamation to be given that I will read uh, into the record at this time. And this is from the office of the Mayor, Rochelle Robinson. And we are recognizing the 52nd Annual Professional Municipal Clerks Week, of, which is May 2nd through May 8th, 2021. Whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world, and whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk is the oldest among public servants, and whereas the Office of Professional Municipal Clerk provides the professional link between citizens, the local governing bodies, and agencies of government at other levels, and whereas the Professional Municipal Clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal services to all. And whereas the professional municipal clerk serve as the, serves as the information center on functions of local government and community, and whereas professional municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the office of the professional municipal clerk through participation in education programs, seminars, workshops, 
and the annual meetings of their state, provincial, county, and international professional organizations, and whereas it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of Professional Municipal Clerk. Therefore, I, Mayor Pro Tem Terry Miller, in the name of Mayor Rochelle Robinson of the City of Douglasville, do hereby proclaim the week of May 2nd through May 8th, 2021, as Professional Municipal Clerks Week, and further extend appreciation to our professional municipal clerks, Vicki Acker, the City Clerk, and Candace James, the Assistant City Clerk, and to all professional municipal, municipal clerks for, all the, for the vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent, so proclaim this 29th day of April of 2021. We gonna do a, are we going to do a picture, Madam? It's up to you all. Okay. I think we should. If everybody wants to gather around at a properly socially distant. Yes. Do you want to say something, Ms. Vicky? I'm sorry. Well, actually, Pro Tem, listen. Mayor Pro Tem and council members, um, Ms. Candace and I would like to thank you all for uh, acknowledging uh, the Municipal Clerks Week uh, next week. We really appreciate it and we enjoy every day what we do for you all. I have the same sentiments and I really have enjoyed my time here with the city of Douglasville. It really is one of the best cities to work for, so I appreciate everything and it is an honor to work uh, with and alongside all of you and to uh, serve the citizens. citizens. Thank you. <laughs> okay, everybody smile for a bunch here. Thank you again, Ms. Acker, Ms. James. I will say that the, the city clerk's job is one of those ones I think many of us take for granted uh, because it gets done so well and so efficiently so often. So it, you sort of become background after a while. We don't notice, but uh, it's, you've got your just due. And uh, thank you very much again for the work you guys do. Appreciate it. All right, we will move on from here and to the uh, rest of tonight's agenda. And our first committee uh, to present is the Economic Development Committee. And as Chair, I will not chair that, chair the committee of the whole, I will not chair that committee tonight, so our Vice Chair, Councilwoman Nicole Miller will chair that for us, thank you. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, we do have one item this evening, and that is to appoint an, my apologies, I cannot talk, <laughs> to appoint a individual to the Douglasville Downtown Development Authority for post four for a term expiring March 22nd, 2024. And I do believe Ms. Patrice Williams. Okay. Patrice Dallas. Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. There are two candidates wishing to serve in this position, Ms. Carol Bur Burton and Mr. Daryl Farrar. The selected candidate will serve an unexpired term expiring March 22nd, 2024. Mayor and Council will have a ballot on Monday, May 3rd to vote. Thank you, Ms. Williams. And I believe we did interview Ms. Carroll. Was at the last round of meetings? Correct. And then that second mm -hmm. interview that was today. Mm -hmm. All right, great. So we'll take it up Monday. Thank you. And that's all we have for economic development. Thank you, Councilwoman Miller. Thank you, Councilwoman Miller. Our uh, next item is for uh, the Finance Committee, Chairman Mark Adams. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, we have two items tonight. The first is authorize the mayor to sign an agreement with Evergreen Solutions, LLC to provide management consulting services for the city's classification and compensation study and analysis. Ms. Tia Austin Bean has brought that information to us during our committee uh, meetings this afternoon, uh, and she is coming forward to give us an overview of that uh, in preparation for a vote on Monday. Ms. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening again. Mayor Pro Tem and Council, Tia Austin Bean, 6695 Church Street. 
Human Resources. Um, as you mentioned, this item was brought before you in committees um, for um, an exp explanation of our, our process to begin our compensation and classification study uh, for the city of Douglasville. Um, we have a recommendation uh, out of the 12 proposals that we reviewed um, of the committee that consisted of Human Resources Finance and the Assistant City Manager. Um, we narrowed down um, four proposals for interview process and the committee um, has scored and recommended um, the proposal for Evergreen Solutions. Uh, this project is uh, within budget. It is um, uh, also recommended that uh, we begin this process to be implemented for fiscal year um, 22. And if you have any additional questions from committees, I will take those at this time. Thank you, Ms. Bing. Are there questions or comments? Anyone? I know we discussed this in our 5 o'clock meeting, and we should take this up on Monday. I'm not going to ask because we are short two council members that, that we place it on the consent agenda. So we will take that up on Monday night, and we thank you for that input, Ms. Bing, and for all that hard work. You're welcome, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, second is to authorize the mayor to sign an agreement with Suburban Consulting Engineers Incorporated for professional geographic information systems services. Ms. Patrice Williams has information for us. Okay. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. Uh, we are extremely excited about the opportunity uh, for this contract with this GIS company. Uh, as you know, we've had a tremendous uptick of development here in the city, so this would be instrumental uh, to the Community Development Department uh, we would be able to uh, place ordinances on GIS so people could take a look at what's happening on different parcels. And so that would be very beneficial to particularly tributary New Manchester, that area where we could tie those ordinances to the different parcels. Uh, we could take a look at construction activity for building permits, floodplain da data, capital projects, site selector. Uh, so we could look at sites for buildings, potentially, for developers who are looking to locate here in Douglasville. And of course, we can list our incentive zones, which of course would include the TAD and the Opportunity Zone. So we're really excited about this uh, potential contract here. So if you have any questions, uh, I'm available, of course, to take them. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Comments, questions, anyone? Seeing none. Okay, then we'll take this up on Monday for a vote. Okay, We thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, Council Mayor Pro Tim, that's all we have tonight. Thank you, Council Mayor. Under finance, thank you. Uh, our next committee is the Housing Community Affairs Committee. Uh, that will be conducted by our Vice Chair tonight, Mark Adams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tim. We have no business tonight. Thank you, Councilman Adams. Our next uh, committee is Legislative Intergovernmental Committee. By, uh, that will be uh, chaired by Councilman Sam Davis. At this time, no business tonight, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Our next committee is Personnel and Organization Committee that is uh, chaired by Councilman Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, we have no business tonight in Personnel and Organization. Thank you, Councilman Watts. Our next uh, item is Planning and Development Committee and that is chaired by Councilman Mark Adams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, we have several items tonight. First is to appoint an individual to serve as the Ward 3 Post 2 member of the Douglasville Planning Commission to fill an unexpired term expiring June 1, 2023. Ms. Williams. Okay. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. The Ward 3 Post 2 position on the Douglasville Planning Commission is currently vacant. There are two individuals that meet the requirements set forth in a new ordinance who would currently like to serve in the position. Mr. Ewell Lammy, who was interviewed earlier at the five o'clock is, is one of the candidates and there will be another candidate interviewed Monday, May 3rd that will be interviewed as well. Uh, Mayor and Council will have a ballot on Monday, May 3rd to vote for one of the indiv individuals. The individual selected will fill an unexpired term expiring June 1st, 2023. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Uh, as you all noted, uh, we did have the interview with Mr. Lammy this afternoon and there is another interview to be done on Monday prior to a vote at our six o'clock meeting. Any question or comment? I notice Mr. Lammy's still in the audience. Uh, <clears throat> he may have something else he would like to say, but it's not necessary. But if he would like, I would sure allow that. But we thank you. Thank you again for your service and for your willingness to serve in that position, sir. Any other? Moving on to item B, consider a request for plat approval for the purpose of consolidating two lots for 10.3 acres 
on Highway 92 and at 7669 Highway 92 in Landlot 705, District 1, Section 3, Parcels 3 and 15. Application by HRC Incorporated. Ms. Williams. Okay, Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. I won't repeat the information provided by the by the chair, but the item does meet the requirements of the UDO. The reserve, you all are familiar with it. It's on Highway 92. Uh, essentially, we need them to combine the parcels as the buildings are uh, crossing the property lines. So this is just a simple housekeeping item here. Questions, comments? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. The, uh, uh, Ms. Williams, I'm trying to understand the, the two parcels that are being combined, um, they seem to be, if I'm understanding, they look like they're coming together at a, at a, at point. a, at a point. That, right. That's mm -hmm. considered adjacent. Mm -hmm. All you need is an infinitesimally Common small point. Property. Right. And Common I do property. have, uh, we have someone on the line, Aaron McCullough. He's with HRC. So if you have any questions, we do have a representative uh, with us. I just, yeah, that was the only thing I was, I was curious about that I didn't realize that you could combine properties yeah. based we, on a single point. Correct. And we, we can't give them a building uh, permit until they fix this. Okay. Thank you. That's all this year. Okay. Any other? We thank Mr. McCullough for being available. We don't have any questions. It does not appear. And so uh, we will take that up on Monday night for a vote. Item C. Consider a request for final plat approval for the purpose of consolidating four lots for 41.43 acres at Preston Boulevard and Bob Arnold Boulevard in land lot 677, District 18, Section 2, parcels 2 and 5, in land lot 678, District 18, Section 2, parcel 10, and land lot 709, District 18, Section 2, parcel 2. Application by Jerry McKinnon. Ms. Williams, do you have information on that? I do. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. Essentially, this is the same thing, same issue. Uh, the buildings would be crossing property lines, so we're asking them to make this change. The uh, application, the development plan, the final plat does meet the requirements of the UDL. Thank you. Is there anyone that is on remotely to speak about this item or be available? Mm -mm. Questions, comments, counsel? Mr. Mayor Pro Tem? Okay. See none, then we'll consider that, take that up for a vote on Monday. Thank you, Ms. Williams. All right. Moving right along, item D. Consider a request for final plat approval for the purpose of subdividing into two lots, 6.312 acres at 8271 Cedar Mountain Road, land lot 194, District 2, Section 5, Parcel 65. The application is by Mr. Lon Bell, and Ms. Williams has information. Okay. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. Um, this application does meet the requirements of the UDO. We do have the applicant with us tonight if you have, if you have any questions, but he's requesting that the property be split for future development. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Mr. Bell, if you have information, and I appreciate you being available. If you have something you would like to say, we'll be happy to hear from you. If we have questions that council may have of you, then uh, this is the appropriate time. Anyone? Mr. Bell, go ahead if you have something you'd like to yeah. say. Lon Bell at 6470 Cedar Mountain Road, Douglasville, Georgia. So uh, the purpose of the split, as y'all know, I help special needs adults. Uh, we did a special land use permit on another piece of property. Uh, I'm working with a, a local known architect trying to uh, go ground up with a development, but the building costs are a little high right now, if you've noticed, and but we're just preparing this lot for future use, hopefully, uh, to help the special needs population. Anyone have any questions? Okay. We appreciate you coming in, sir. We'll take that up on Monday for a Thank vote. You. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, that's all that I have tonight under planning and development. Thank you, Chairman Adams. Um, moving on to the next uh, item is the Public Improvement and Beautification Committee, and that is uh, chaired by Councilman Nicole Miller. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. We do have one item this evening, and that is to authorize the mayor to sign an agreement with Pratt Recycling to receive and dispose of recyclables collected by the city of Douglasville. And we do have Mr. Greg Roberts here to go over that with us. Thank you, sir. Good evening, evening everybody. Mayor Pro Tem and Council, Ms. Hampton. Greg Roberts, Public Services Department, 6695 Church Street. I give the city hall address because I can never remember my new address. So anyway, um, 
As you know, and our citizens know, we're going to start back res residential recycling on Monday, this coming Monday, May 3rd. And uh, so uh, after we had announced that date, Pratt got back to us and uh, uh, wanted to do an agreement with us. And I think part of that is in their interest, obviously. They're trying to get a lot of cities and counties and municipal gov governments to get back in the action because they're, now their recycling numbers are down. But uh, that's another story, maybe for another day. But this agreement as, uh, comes about at a good time for us. As you know, for almost two years, we've been talking about the uh, recycling market and where it's been. And um, uh, with, with very little notice in the fall of 2019, we were notified that our rate would go from paying nothing per ton to $65 a ton, if you recall. And that's what it was when we abruptly stopped the service um, mm -hmm. as the pandemic uh, came upon us last year. So this agreement, <clears throat> and if you're looking at it at, at page two, um, it, it has a top end of $80 per ton, but our rate is going to be $48.15 per ton. Um, when you sort of weigh it all out, no pun intended, and what this is, is uh, Pratt will um, assess our loads as we dump them. And uh, so they will give us the discount based on those materials. This can change quarterly. So as I've mentioned to some of you and have discussed with Ms. Hampton, if in three, six, nine months, um, this is not looking like it's favorable to us, we'll come back and talk about it again. So feel free to ask me every couple of months how it's looking because I'm going to uh, communicate with our folks at Pratt on a regular basis and to see what they're doing on this. But I do know they want some materials back and I do believe this is why they're trying to do a, something that's more favorable to us and themselves because uh, they want the cardboard and they want the plastic. It helps fuel their cardboard mill. And uh, so in a nutshell, $48.15 is the rate as we go into it that may change in July. Mr. Roberts, is there anything in particular that would change that rate? Like for instance, if our residents throw away plastics that are not the number ones or twos? I, I do not think so. Uh, what I would tell you, and Pratt is not here to speak for themselves, um, but we take a little bit of pride in being one of their better customers, even when we stopped abruptly last year. Um, I won't give any of the folks that we were competing against, but our recycling was a lot cleaner. I do believe that our, our recycling will be less than what we want to start with, but they know this, we know this, um, and so it's going to be a, a, a work in progress. I've talked to Ms. Weeks with KDB, and we're going to try to assess our own loads and just, um, you, you know, you can't, as we discussed in the budget here and the other day, you can't go out and check every container at 8,500, 9,000 houses, but you can check certain streets. And uh, so we're, we'll try to do some random checks ourselves and sort of see what's in it. But most plastics that all of us use is a one and two. There are twos, a threes through sevens, but those are, not that many, and, and we have given out the information. We've sent mailers out to residents. Anybody that watches this or reads about this, if they'll contact us at 770-920-3005 or send us an email to sanitation at douglasvillega.gov, we will send them that information back, explaining it all. But um, cardboard and ones and two plastic was always a good source for us coming from our, our citizens. Uh, but I, I do believe we'll have some contamination starting back as we get going back, but that's to be expected. It's, it's, it's no big deal. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that that wouldn't change our rates. Thank you for explaining all of that to us. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. I'd just, I just like to thank Mr. Roberts and, and staff for all their hard work in bringing this back because I know we have residents that, uh, at least I have some constituents that every month are asking me when. Why did we stop? When are we going to start back? Why aren't we doing it? And uh, I have a daughter, particularly, that's been saving recycling up for us. So um, I appreciate the, all the work. And it sounds as though we have actually benefited from waiting, even though it's been an inconvenience. 
to go from 65 down to 48. Now that maybe there's a demand again. So I uh, hope it works out. Thank you for all you're doing, Greg. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No. Nope. I think I heard a faint cheer from outside the walls as he got <laughs> up there and talked about this. Absolutely. I know we've all been waiting on this. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Rogers. You. And we will take this up Monday. That is all that we have for public improvement and beautification. Thank you, Councilman Miller. Our next uh, item is the Public Relations Committee, and that is chaired by Vice Chair Sam Davis. No items at this time, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Our yes, next sir. item after that is the Public Safety Committee, also chaired by Councilman Sam Davis. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I have a couple of items. First item is a holy public hearing to consider a request for an alcoholic beverage license for the on-premises sale and consumption of wine and malt beverage and spirit liquor at the following establishment. License cases, Tequila, LLC, DBA case of Tequila, location 2167 Fabin Road, proposed agent outlet manager, landscape required fees have been paid into the finance. Department, but well, Mr. Gay, please uh, come down if you're here. I want to thank City Council and Mayor Pro Tem for letting us come in for this meeting. I've been a long resident of Douglas County since I was way high. Me and my wife were real excited about opening a restaurant here in Douglasville. We live here in Douglas County, so we'll. Uh, and we okay. think that um, we'll make a great improvement right. to the, to the well, area. Can you state your name and address for the records, please? Yes, sir. My name is Lance Gay. Address is 2258 Alyssa Court, Lithia Springs, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gay, is this your first adventure in the restaurant fields? My wife was a manager in her home country for about five years. Uh, I'm actually in the construction field and I build restaurants, so. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there's a lot that goes along with uh, how you plan on training your employees. I went through the RASH training already, mm -hmm. uh, the Responsible Alcohol Sales and Service. It is our intentions that our employees will do that same training as what I did. That would be one of the requirements? I think it should be a requirement, and my wife thinks the same thing. And we, we were planning on bringing them into the restaurant to do the training for the employees. Oh, good. That'd be a plus. Okay. Council members, Mayor Pro Tem, first. No questions at the time, sir. Any other council members? I don't have any. Okay. At this time, we will have to hold a public hearing. And, and, uh, See if we have anyone from the public that would uh, speak, speak against your application. We give them five minutes to speak against. Then we give them five minutes to uh, speak for your application. And at this time, we are beginning to hold a public hearing. And if you're out there and you want to speak against, I give you five minutes to come on down. As I see no takers, I give the, the, the applicant, applicant and the people that want to speak for the applicant to come on down. Since I've seen no takers, we're closing the uh, public hearing and come back on uh, Monday. And, and uh, thanks a lot. And thank you. Yep, congratulations. Item B, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, adopt the resolution to adopt. The updated Douglas County multi-jurisdiction hazard mitigation plan as the official hazard mitigation plan of the city of Douglasville. Mr. Greg Roberts, this is yours. I will be ready to, to discuss that on Monday night. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Robert. Thank I'm going to make sure I give you a call. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have, uh, <laughs> Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Councilman Davis. Our next uh, committee is the Recreation, Culture, and Tourism Committee that is chaired by Councilman Chris Watts. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, we have one item tonight, uh, item A, to adopt a resolution declaring May 2nd through the 8th, 2021 as National Travel and Tourism Week in the city of Douglasville. And Mr. Rosado mm -hmm. will take this. 
Good evening, Samantha Rosado, 12385 Veterans Memorial Highway. In front of you is a routine resolution declaring May 2nd through May 8th National Travel and Tourism Week. We have a full week plan to celebrate the power of travel to include a 50-50 raffle in partnership with Main Street Douglasville, a travel rally here at the Conference Center on Tuesday, May 4th at 8 a.m., Heroes of Hospitality drops at the 23 hotels within the city of Douglasville on Wednesday, a frontline hospitality training on Thursday, May 6th at 2 p.m., and an active social media campaign to kick off and wrap up the week. This annual tradition was established in 1983 by a congressional resolution and is a time where the U.S. travel community comes together to celebrate the value travel holds for our economy, businesses, and personal well-being. Thank you, Ms. Rosado. Uh, do we have any uh, comments from uh, Mayor Pro Tem or Council? <coughs> okay, and we don't have uh, 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 Madam uh, Chairwoman uh, Burdanley. No, oh, no, okay. All right. Um, I, I guess this would be one of those things we might put on the uh, consent agenda for Monday. All right, Ms. Rosado, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, that's all we had tonight under Recreation, Culture, and Tourism. Thank you, uh, Cal Councilman Watts. Our next item is the Technology Committee, and that will be uh, taken care of by Ranking Member Councilman Sam Davis. At this time, I have no business tonight, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Our last committee tonight is the Transportation Committee, and that will be uh, chaired by the Vice Chair, Councilman Mark Adams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. We have no business tonight under transportation. Thank you, Councilman Adams. Do we have any other business by any other council member at this time? Anybody would like to bring anything forward? Okay. Uh, we're moving on to updates from the city staff. Uh, the, our uh, city attorney, Mr. Joel Dotson, do you have any uh, business tonight? No business, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Dotson. Our staff attorney. Uh, is Ms. Woodwood? You're down here now. <laughs> I'm used to looking for you up there. Now I got to get used to that. Thank you, Ms. Woodward. Um, Chief of Police, Gary Sparks, do you have anything for us? No business, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Chief. And our Southern City Manager, Marsha Hampton. No business, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Are you sure? I am positive. Last chance. I filled y'all up Monday and Tuesday. I was thinking, you know, you didn't, you didn't want any more. Are there any staff reports tonight that we need to be aware of? No, sir. Okay. There's no, um, I guess at this time we have, uh, we will open the floor for comments from citizens and delegates. You have, uh, will be under the same uh, time allotment that we uh, discussed earlier. So if anybody would like to come down and uh, express your thoughts and opinions, now is the time to do it. Hi, how's everyone doing tonight? Good. Um, oh, it's a little caught up in my earring. Excuse me. Um, so my name is Sarah Buckner. Should I state my address first? Uh, are you over 18? Yeah, yes. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, 26. The, my address is 3825 Paces Walk, Southeast Suite 100, Atlanta, Georgia, 30309. Um, and this is Payne Hirschberger. And my address is 780. Penn Avenue Northeast, Atlanta, Georgia, 30308. So we're with TBG Residential. We're a multifamily developer based in Atlanta, Georgia. To give you guys a little bit of background about who we are, we've been in business since the 1920s. Um, we're a fourth generation company and we have around 18 communities currently placed in service with four under construction, rounding out to about 3,500 units throughout the Southeast in Atlanta, Georgia, and Tennessee. And we're also a vertically integrated company, meaning we have an in-house development company, management, and construction, and we're the long-term owners um, of our developments as well. So why we're here today is we're currently under contract on a piece of land on Durley Lane south of Fairburn Road. And that site falls within your redevelopment plan, the Douglasville redevelopment plan that you guys have adopted. 
So a part of us receiving financing for this deal is we need a letter that simply states from a government representative um, that confirms the fact that the tax allocation district is there to advance the goals of the community redevelopment plan. It's a pretty simple letter. Um, you might have seen some correspondence in your email. We've been working with the community development office um, and just trying to come up with a way, the best way to get this letter from a government representative and Patrice, it's, she's, been incredible. she's been great um, to work with. Um, and so that's really why we're here tonight um, is to get either the city council's acknowledgement or approval to issue, I guess, a letter or a statement that says the tax <coughs> allocation district is there to advance the goals of the community redevelopment plan. And that's really kind of the gist of why we've come here um, tonight. So if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Any questions from any member of the council? Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I would, I would uh, refer to our city uh, manager or to Ms. Woodward, our attorney. I'm, I'm not familiar with the letter. Uh, I've not been uh, approached about it at all, and obviously there must be some, there must be some reason why there's some back and forth uh, concerning that letter. So I would just say that we would need to hear from them and then go from there. Mr. Um, Mayor Pro Tem, Council, we typically don't provide letters um, either signed by myself, uh, the mayor, or the um, community development director unless it's under the purview of what we typically do from day to day or directed by U.S. Council, particularly in competitive processes like this. Um, when there needs verification from state organizations, we just refer them to the document um, that is proof. So if there's a need to verify that the tax allocation district is referenced in the document, we will just provide the document as we would any other applicant. But to sign off um, on a letter, that is not something that we typically do. Um, if it is something um, that you want to move forward with for any applicant, um, I think Ms. Woodward has a recommendation of a process that we can implement. Um, we have just, um, in order to remain fair and impartial uh, to applicants, just shied away from those types of things outside of items that we can just freely provide um, that's already part of um, anything that they can obtain via open records. But not, we don't typically write letters um, to provide verification. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. So then, the city manager, basically the letter that they're requesting is something that obviously we, we're not, we have not been, we have not had a tax allocation district. Is that correct? So this is something that is new. There, uh, what, um, it appears that DCA is asking for documentation that the tax allocation district is listed or referenced in our redevelopment plan. So therefore, from a staff perspective, the way to verify that is to give a copy of the redevelopment plan. Okay. But they're indicating that that's not sufficient, um, that they're looking for a letter from us as a jurisdiction from signed either by Patrice, myself, or the mayor to verify that. Which in your opinion then, and I'd like to hear from Ms. Woodward, in your opinion then that would be that signing of that letter and giving to the developer, any developer would then be a sign of support for that project? And not necessarily. Um, so first of all, City of Douglasville is not required to sign that by the DCA. And secondly, um, this is a new requirement that the DCA has um, for this, uh, I, I, for this um, particular application this year. And if Council would be willing to have that that kind of verification. It would be it would be applicable to any applicants um, who have who have a project that in the city of Douglasville that might qualify for DCA's um, program. So it would be um, just a general verification, and I don't believe it would be uh, showing support in favor of a particular applicant if it's addressed very generally to anyone who might, it's available to any applicant who might request one. And, and I do want to add this, Councilman Adams, um, if we provide this verification, understand that some of these applicants would be potentially applying for projects that you may or may not support. So it is a verification letter. It's not necessarily indicating your support, but you are adding a component on your behalf um, as a part of the application. 
That is another reason uh, to bring this before you because we're talking about tax credit projects with, um, in some instances, um, you all have questioned whether or not uh, the number of tax credit projects that you want in the community. So it's another reason to bring this before you. Um, I'm, I'm, I agree with Ms. Um, Woodward that she has put her legal stamp on it that is not necessarily indicating support. I just want you all to be very aware if this is a pro process that is gonna be a part of um, an applicant coming before community development, that a letter signed by the city may be a part of their application. So then what is your suggestion that we do? I'm assuming that we need time to look into this and to make a decision. Uh, this is the first that we've been, uh, been approached, the first time we've been approached, I think, by, by, any, by any developer concerning the need for this letter. If, if you're not concerned um, from a political standpoint about a verification letter going in the application of a tax credit project, then I say you move forward because I do believe time is of the essence. If you want to consider how you feel about that, um, because I do think, again, it's more or less a political positioning, per se, of how you feel uh, than anything else. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Adams. Any other comments or questions? Um, Councilman Miller, you thought you were about to say something. Yes, I was actually. Um, whether or not the letter is support, uh, I, I don't know, but it feels like support to me. And without seeing any plans from you guys, any kind of, yeah, no development plans at all, I don't feel comfortable with doing that letter. That's something we are absolutely happy to share with counselors if you know we can send that out via email um, of course and I do want to clarify that this is something new as you mentioned that's re that's required by the Department of Community Affairs we might be the first ones asking for it um, which is possibly why you haven't heard about it but by no means I mean this will and absolutely can be a blanket statement addressed to all developers we're just I'm not representing any other developer other than TPG residential so I just want to make that clear that it's, you know, if anyone asks for it, then they, they should be able um, to get it. And I'm happy to share those um, plans with you if this is something you guys have interest in. And that also being said, um, I think that, I don't know, I think actually that's all I had to say, but I, Payton, unless you wanted to add anything no. to that. So happy to work with you guys. Um, on this and I guess we appreciate your <clears throat> suggestions and comments and oh sorry excuse me the letter of support I mean if you explicitly want to say this is not a letter of support this is an acknowledgement that the TAD exists to advance the goals of the CRP that would also be sufficient if in a way to protect you know from a political standpoint that would also work um, so that's all I had to add but if there's no other questions um, I thank you guys all for your time tonight Mr. Oh, sorry, was Mr. Councilman Watts, you had a question? Well, I, uh, I guess I'll address this to Ms. Hampton. Uh, up to this point, uh, these type of projects, when they come before us, this letter has not been part of the process from what I'm hearing tonight, and it's a That's new correct. requirement. That's correct. Uh, not necessarily a, a requirement for them to ask, but not necessarily a requirement for a municipality to, to either do it or not do it That's if they great. haven't done it in the past. So these types of projects have gone forward in communities without this type of uh, letter being issued by the municipality um, in the past. From, from my understanding, I mean, you all have known, you've had projects that have come before you. Some of them have applied for tax credits. Some of them um, have not gotten them. You know, some of them have, depending upon the program that they're interested in. Um, you know, I would say um, what's being presented to you from um, the appeal of the um, developer, you may want to, if you want to consider this, they are correct. This, it's not the first, it's not gonna be the last, which is even the, more so the reason I'm bringing this to you, is that you could ask your legal staff to draft something that clearly states this is more or less um, awareness of what's located in our plans, but nowhere close to acknowledgement that we are supporting an application. Um, we can do that if, if it is the desire to, um, um, you know, have this and we can have that housed in the community development department. But um, as, as we've mentioned before, these projects are abundant every spring, as you have noticed, you, they're coming before you. And in the fall, there's another round in the fall. Well, the only reason they're, at, they're asking for this is because 
uh, it's being required at the other end, but we have fielded these types of uh, uh, applications before without this being part of the process. So why has this been put in by the, uh, you said DC, uh, DCA? I'm not certain why the Department of Community Affairs is asking. I'm not really sure. They change it every year, so there's always something new. They tweak, they tweak it. It's really a lot of work on the applicants, uh, but this is just something new that they decided to add, add this year. It could just be that it's easier. They can read the memo as opposed to having to read the entire development plan. That, that, I, I don't know. That's a great. That's a great <laughs> point. Um, but if it's in the document, and it, and if what and if what they're required to do then is find it in the document and identify it. Mm -hmm rather than having a letter stating, that, oh, yes, it's in the document. Here it is. The city of Douglasville does agree that this project, this location, and this legal description is a part of the TAD in our, in our redevelopment plan within the city. Is that, that sounds as though to me that's basically what it is. All right. It is, except that BCA wants a letter that states that. Yeah. Okay. I'm done. Um, if, you all, if you all need more time, I would suggest um, at least uh, considering the weekend and, and giving us some direction on Monday. That way we can follow up with um, these ladies so they can at least know where to go from there and we're not dragging it out uh, for the application process. Um, question I would have is in addition to the points you made, is there any other potential procedural or legal obligation that that would put us in if we? I guess depending upon the nature of the letter. It, it is really an administrative grace whether or not you want to provide that verification. We've not received any communication from the DCA, and as far as I know, in reading through the QAP process, it's not required that a municipality or local government needs to have that sort of verification readily available for applicants. How, how common is this amongst other communities? Is this something that's now you said this is a pretty new requirement. It's, a, it's brand new. Do we know if other, other communities have given these letters? I, I can pull, um, you know, the request. I mean, one of the things that you'll find, uh, especially when it comes to tax credit developments, it'll be a little bit different because, again, I think the, the question that staff is asking you all is more so your comfortability in the process where you may have some communities that are readily available and open for these types of projects where you all have been a little bit more considering depending upon what they bring and what location they're in. Mr. Chair, uh, or, uh, uh, I, I just was wondering, this is part of the points process in this also. There's another for step applicants. that they will probably come before you to ask for another letter as part of the points. They will have to go through that process that you all just adopted. This is prior to that. Does this give, uh, d so this issuing of this letter is not, does not give any of the uh, prospective developers a point in the process? No, no, they now have to go through the application process that you all just adopted. They, they get a point? I was gonna say, oh, sorry. There, is a, sorry. there is a point associated with it. I'm sorry, it. I was incorrect, staff is correcting me. They do get a point. There's a point associated with it. Yeah, in the answer, yeah. Mr. Mr. Mayor, go for it. So in asking for this letter, if you receive it from city, you get a point toward approval through, is it GIC? So that's actually another point. Uh, so this is two separate points we're talking about yeah. here. They're requesting this letter to say that, acknowledge that we have this redevelopment plan in place with the TAD. That's totally different from the GIC point that we've been talking about. Okay. okay. We we have applied for the GIC application, but that is a completely separate. That's not why we're here tonight. Um, this, the the point that Patrice is talking about is from the Department of Community Affairs. It's not issued by the city for the this letter. At, our application process, and I'm sure you could speak to it as well, is a point scoring application process. So it's just the way that DCA can decide where I guess the communities should be located. Um, and so this is just a part of our application. Everything is a, is a point, you know, school systems are a point scoring item, you know, things like that. So it's not specific to your community. It's not something specifically we're asking for, such as this new GIC program that you guys have recently adopted. 
So whether we, whether we do this or not, I hate to keep uh, digging into this, whether we do this or not, uh, it's, it's not an unfair advantage for anybody if we issue the letter or we decide we're, we're just not going to participate in that. I would just suggest that if you're going to issue a letter, then you're issuing a letter to every person that comes before you. It's not a, a right. pick and choose. This right. is just something that you do acknowledging that that applicant gets a point for that letter. Um, and again, if you all need more time to think about, yeah. think about it, then we can come back on Monday uh, to decide. I, I would wonder that if, if the if we're to issue a letter for everyone, every applicant, perchance every applicant that comes before us, would there not have to be some kind of cutoff that we could say, oh, these guys, no, 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 we can't get that. Hey, I don't, because it's an only an acknowledgement letter. That's okay. really what you're doing. You're acknowledging that your tax allocation district is in the redevelopment plan, so I don't know how, what position you would have to decline. No, it would be applicable to everyone. So it's, every okay, developer so, had, that had a project so it's, it's, the city of Douglasville would get that same it's really not, then it sounds like it's really not an endorsement at any level. It's really an acknowledgement is what you're saying. Correct. Yeah. It's, it's similar to what when the staff says, you know, XYZ project meets the requirements of the development plan and. and uh, it's, I would, I would relate it more or less to a zoning verification letter. You're not mm -hmm. acknowledging that that person gets any change in zoning. You're just acknowledging what the zoning is. Um, however, so not like you're co-signing the loan. <laughs> correct. However, you you do know what comes with that is a point on their application, mm -hmm. and it's a letter on your letterhead. Mm -hmm. So again, it's can other and other applicants can also get that same point, or is that point only given to? Uh, it, it sounds as if if an applicant shows this letter, they get a point. Okay, so we can be handing out points to everybody. With this letter, you would. Okay. Well, um, unless there's any other discussion, it sounds like what we can do is let the council mull this over over the next couple of days. Um, it sounds like we should probably put this under a committee, and I'm assuming maybe housing and community affairs would be the best committee. Do you think? Or we can discuss it under other business wherever you all Anyone would know? like. I figured if you just if we put it in the committee, they can come up for a vote if we want to do it that way. Is anybody opposed to that? Okay, so we'll put it under that committee and let that come up under that committee on Monday. Okay. So. All right. All right. Well, thank you very okay. much. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And if there's any further questions, I know that this is, you know, more than just, I said, if there's any further questions via email or on the phone, we're happy to jump on a call and kind of further yeah. explain this. I know that there's more to it. Any other, as we've discussed. Any other information you just send to the city clerk and then. Okay. Just, just Absolutely. Thank you all for your time tonight. Thank you. Are there any other comments or uh, anything from citizens and delegates? Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, uh, ex officio, do you have any? He, he doesn't have any. <laughs> I don't think that's my time. <laughs> I just gave it. Uh, um, let's see. Well, hearing that there, if there are no other comments or questions, anything, any other business from city council or staff, then this meeting is adjourned.